Hey ladies, I am La Yuma Kuwana, and today's episode is Love Thy Sister. Now, I'm going to admit that I have been suffering from a tremendous amount of insecurity for most of my life, and it's this unspoken rivalry that we have between each other that is usually over a guy, right? it's usually over a man. And we feel that we must protect uh, our resource of love and even at the expense of disregarding another woman or belittling her to kind of uh, falsely inflate our own sense of confidence. And so I, I wanted to air that out today because it's something that I've noticed throughout my travels, places I've lived, and like I said, in myself, I'm not proud of it. However, I have traced this back to a sense of unworthiness whether that was something that was imprinted in me as a child or something, a traumatic event, um, I'm not quite sure because it's in the subconscious. Um, and the, re the way I figured that out is because, you know, intellectually, if you were to ask me, Elizabeth, do you feel you deserve love? I would be like, absolutely, yes. I, I would like to be in a partnership and, and share my life and et cetera. We're, we're wired for that, right? However, my behavioral patterns would say the opposite. I was allowing myself to be mistreated in my relationships, to be disrespected, to be lied to and cheated on, and I would tolerate this. And I would allow these people to come back into my life like a revolving door. And it wasn't just isolated to relationships. It also played out in the dynamics of my family and my friendships alike. And so once I realized that, I had to go back to constructive solitude and be single and take time to do some inner work. However, I wanted to talk about this today because part of what helps me heal that um, internal wound in myself of unworthiness and maybe even self-loathing, I, I, I'm not sure what's what's in there, right? It's, uh, it's the dark aspect of your psyche. But what has helped me through this process is love and, and particularly love from, from my female friends. And that has translated into more openness and compassion for um, women that I just come across in my life, complete strangers. And so that, that's what I want to talk about today. Back in the day, we would seek out a mate who was physically able to build a shelter, who could hunt wild beasts and provide food. And it was understood if we procreated with this individual, those strong genes would in turn um, be passed on to our children. You know, some of those reasons are obsolete, right? There's no more uh, saber-toothed tigers to run from. However, there's still, I believe, this underlying kind of um, anxiety uh, and, and this false sense of competition that we have with one another. So, for example, sometimes I would be out with uh, my, my boyfriend at the time. And if I would even see what could potentially be an attractive woman my mind would start to race and my heart my internal body temperature would rise and all these different physiological reactions and i i just i, I guess there was a part of me it, 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 that was based on fear right and, and what did i think would really happen that my boyfriend would just like detach from me and you know walk on over to her and be like hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like what do, you, what do you think is gonna happen like that's ridiculous right so what I'm saying is that we needn't hate on one another. And this is not applicable to all women, um, but to some. And like I'm admitting to you uh, at one point that this was me. And so what I'm proposing is instead of belittling each other, right, or just even casting judgment immediately um, when we see uh, another woman, whether it be on her attire or her hair or anything, reframe that and realize that there's nothing to fear. If if your partner, if your boyfriend wants to cheat on you, he is going to do it regardless, right? He will find a way and he will find time. And really jealousy, you may have heard this, is ironically has the opposite effect of what you wanted to. You want your relationship to be sacred. If your relationship is, is a monogamous one, uh, you know, sex is to stay, you know, between you guys. and. You don't want anything interfering or jeopardizing that, but these insecurities in our in our mind, I also attribute it to media and advertisements and marketing and magazines, uh, kind of conditioning our minds to believing that if what you're looking at doesn't align 
with what society would have you believe is beauty in the in the classical you know, society accepted way then we are to, we we are to reject that as being beautiful and that is tremendously unfair because there is unique beauty in all of us we have been manifested as a representation of um, the hybrid of the genes of our parents but our soul that intangible essence of who we are i believe that that radiates beauty much stronger than anything external right and i think that we overlook that and we have a tendency of focusing too much on external and so there's no reason to be envious or jealous or any of these other negative emotions that are an underutilization of our power as women and it weakens us and it disempowers us um when we're so busy uh concerned about what another female looks like or whether our man is you know thinking of her in a sexual way or wh whatever it is i challenge us to come together as animately and as cohesively as we did in the feminist movement really like and that was a lofty goal that we achieved just equal rights being able to vote being able to have um, a right to education and career so we can be financially independent and not uh, marry just solely for economic reasons, right? We've come a long way from that, but we're not quite done. And so with that, we need to be together, right? We need to be working together as one and complementing one another instead of being divided. So give women credit. It could be something as small as giving a compliment, right? letting a woman know you look beautiful today or that you know that dress you look great in that dress you know something like this not so much as you know those are great boots you look good in those boots something that has to do she didn't make the boots you know what i mean so what are you, what are you really complimenting there but just something to elevate uh one's um you know self-image and confidence if that's all we can offer each other as human beings and as women it's just words of love and of encouragement like why not and I guarantee you that, you know, the woman that you see that you think has it all together and that is perfect, if you were to drill down and ask her what makes her feel insecure, you'd probably be flabbergasted at her retort. We all suffer um, and sometimes silently with a sense of, you know, that we're unattractive, that we're not up to par with society's standards of what is deemed to be beautiful, right? And that's really that's truly sad because that's ever changing number one and ever evolving and number two nobody is you cannot show me one person that is absolutely beautiful or absolutely ugly or whatever because all of that is subjective it is not independent in and of itself and if you ever question why you perceive something as beautiful or not you could probably trace it back to media influence them building this phenotype like this is attractive and this is not and if we as women fall into this um, trap of trying to uh, uphold um, this unattainable and subjective level of perfection that simply does not exist we're going to be miserable and it's a real waste of energy and that is what has really given birth and sustained this trillion dollar industry of creams and magic potions and injections to try to suppress the natural progression of aging. Because somewhere along the line, we have misconstrued that beauty is somehow exclusive for the youth. And that is a false interpretation. That is not true. There is beauty in any age and in every phase of life. You could disagree, but ask yourself, why are you disagreeing? Because is it what society is telling you is beautiful? And that's usually what's in the magazines. You don't see elderly people in the magazines modeling usually, right? Unless it's for like Medicaid or something. It's usually, you know, 16 to 19 year olds, right? That have a certain look, um, that have a certain body weight. It's, it's, so, it's so subliminal throughout the billboards and magazines and commercials and movies that we don't even realize that we are being affected and our opinions are being affected as far as what we classify as being attractive and what is not. So what I am proposing is, can we be cheerleaders for each other and remind each other and point out to one another our innate beauty that goes much deeper than skin level? 
to compliment one another when we have the opportunity. When is the last time that you looked into the eyes of an older woman and said to her, you look beautiful today? So she could feel that she is being seen. She's being appreciated. The, the fact that she matched her lipstick color with the flowers on her blouses or wh whatever it is, right? We can show up for one another like that. And that's essential. Also, have you noticed that even the innocent question of how old are you? Just the word old gives a negative cognition, does it not? Because in Spanish, the question is posed quite differently. It's, ¿cuántos años tiene? Or, how many years do you have? It just sounds different to me. I don't know. Or if I ask somebody that's really um, elderly, you know, I, I always say, how young are you? You know what I mean? Uh, just to kind of give that a little twist. And in reality, age is relative. The baseline for it is your own age, if you notice. As you become older, what you categorize as old or young, that shifts because it depends on your age, right? We overlook that there is beauty and wisdom as well. The wisdom that is accumulated through life experience and life experience alone. If we were to feed each other words of love and compassion, confidence, the hues of the world would become brighter. That vibrational energy is wonderfully contagious and will propagate throughout the world. And so if we are unified, more so than we are now, there is tremendous power in that. And there's a greater sense of security, less judgment, more acceptance of ourselves and of each other. So can we retract our claws, lay down our swords and reframe the way that we're looking at one another? And again, if you don't do this, then, hey, it's not you that I'm addressing, right? But, you know, maybe if you haven't been the insecure woman, maybe you've been on the flip side of that. And the woman that that insecure woman is looking at with loathing. And doesn't it upset you that some couples walk by you and completely dismiss your existence? She doesn't even make eye contact with you. And the guy doesn't either. And some couples are cool, right? Some couples will walk by you and the woman will make eye contact. She'll smile. The guy will say hi. And it's so cool. And I, I really enjoy just a glimpse of those kind of couples who are secure in their love and secure in their relationship. But what I'm saying is, if you come across a person who is dealing with these insecurities, please be compassionate. Be compassionate and understand that that's probably stemming from an area in their consciousness that they're not even aware of. And, and they, they're not sure yet how to eradicate it. And so patience and love is key. And thrive off the fact that we are part of this sisterhood and rekindle that love and admiration for one another. On that note, I wish you guys well. Take care of yourself and each other. And until next time, cuídate. Ciao.